it's Andrea from Prairie Sky DIY. Today we are tackling Stampin' Blends and I'm going to show you with the same stamp from Painted Poppies um, three different things. So you've heard me say time and time again that the paper does matter. Um, so I've got these two are pieces of Stampin' Up's basic white. This is just a cheap um, card stock that I grabbed off the shelf at a big box store. I like to have this on hand for when I am trying new folding techniques um, and different things just because I don't necessarily want to use the good stuff on an experiment. So I'm going to first show you how it performs on the less expensive stuff. Um, I think it's 100 pound card weight. I don't have the package close for me to take a look. But I'm going to show you all three techniques. Um, or the two things that I'm going to work on first. And then we're going to do a bunch of, well, a few different things. Maybe not a bunch. So when we are using our blends, we want to use Memento because it won't run. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a card out of these or if we're just going to have some color play today. <clears throat> so I've got a couple of different things here. Um, I'm going to show you, Russell, Russell, what we can do with the same color. So this is Dark Mary or Melon Mambo on the bottom and Light Melon Mambo. The Stampin' Blends do come in a two pack, but I'm also going to show you what we can accomplish with two colors that aren't the same but are similar and I've got Highland Heather Dark and the Dark Rich Razzleberry here. But first we're going to start with our Light Melon Mambo and we're going to grab our less expensive paper and we're just going to do the outside. I'm not going to get too fussy with this um, and color the center today but we're just gonna do actually we're doing we're doing the inside first so we're gonna do everybody and I'm gonna switch it to the brush end each marker has a fine tip and a brush end when you're using the brush end you want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard um, because you don't want to muck up the ends I'm sure you've heard me tell this story before if you've been around for a little bit. Um, I was coloring some faceted gems with the brush end of my marker and it went south really fast. I actually had to replace that marker because it chewed the nub entirely. All right, so we've got the light done. I'm just going to color the whole thing the same color. And then we're going to go ahead and do on our Stampin' Up! paper the same thing. So you can even see how it's already absorbing into the paper differently on the less expensive cardstock. So for some things in crafting, um, I am totally fine getting bargain basement prices. For other things, I really am not. And what I'm not willing to give up quality for are papers and inks. Um, if you're using lower quality paper, sorry, didn't want to go outside the edge, um, you will totally be able to tell it's not as thick, it's not as durable. Um, and with the Stampin' Up! paper, Outside of coloring with blends, if you make a mistake on one side, you can totally flip it over and go to the other. Now, we're just going to stop here for a second. And you can see that there's already a bit of a color difference. It's not absorbing into the paper as evenly as it is. This is the Stampin' Up! one. Um, you can even tell there's a little bit of a tone difference in the shade. Uh, so it's absorbing more smoothly on the Stampin' Up! paper and a little bit less so smoothly on this, which is giving this one 
a little bit of a blotchy look. Now we're gonna grab, for this one, we're gonna stick with our fine tip. And we're just gonna add little highlights around the edges. We're gonna do a little bit thicker. a bit and you can see that on the less expensive paper um, it's spreading a little bit we're going to do the same thing on our Stampin' Up! piece Going around the outside for this one. I've been really liking Melon Mambo lately. It's such a pretty springy color. I don't know, it might have something to do with the fact that I live in Manitoba and it's been really quite frigid the last few days. All right. So the Stampin' Up! paper is staying pretty much inside of the lines. This is just starting to bleed outside a little tiny bit. And then we're going to go back over with our brush end. And we're just going to go over everybody. Just to kind of get those um, lines that I did blended back with our color. And this is just a really quick and dirty coloring job. This one is primarily just to show you the difference between the papers. Okay, so there's our Stampin' Up! paper done. And then we're going to go back over this one. I like doing circles because it helps hide the marker lines. There are... Um, some cases where I'll do a little bit of a flick. I usually tend to reserve that more for like feathers and fur and stuff. Florals are easy to color with blends. All right, so we've got our slightly, well, we've got both of our flowers colored with the same color. Um, Stampin' up on the bottom, the store brand on the top. And the pigment is not absorbing quite the same on the less expensive and you can tell from the back there will always be bleed through it doesn't matter what kind of alcohol marker you're using um, just because of the way that they're formulated they do bleed through so I always use this on um, something that I'm going to either cut the piece out and put it onto something else so you don't see this poking through this would never be a one layer card for me um, so, I mean, the less expensive cardstock will do in a pinch, but you do get a much better result on a heavier weight uh, cardstock. So, we're going to do our, what color is this one? So Saffron. This is a really soft, pretty yellow. And we're going to basically do the same thing. So, we're just going to layer up our color. Quick and dirty. I love creating and crafting. I am definitely, though, more of a get it done crafter. Um, oh, went outside of the line a little bit on that one. I will never be the crafter who will spend hours and hours and hours on one project. I'm going to do a little different here, and we're going to use our brush in for this one. The longevity of the markers is really quite remarkable. Um, I've yet to have to replace one of my Stampin' Blends, well, except for the one that I mucked up on the end. Um, 
I've never attempted a refill, although I have heard from various sources that it is possible. Um, I suppose, really, if your markers are empty, there's absolutely nothing to lose. All right, and then we're going to do our last one. Um, so for this one, we're using Highland Heather and Rich Razzle Berry. Yep, both are in the dark shade. Um, actually, I was going to do it on there, but I'm going to grab this one instead. So dark Rich Razzle Berry. I always have little scraps on my desk and then our Highland Heather. Highland Heather is one of my favorite purples. So they do work well together. And you can see when I go over, they do blend well together as well. So I'm gonna do everything in our Highland Heather first, and then we're gonna do our defining line in Rich Razzleberry. I was gonna grab my Sunflower Stamp. That's the one that I tend to use the most with our Stampin' Blends just because I really love it. Um, I'm a prairie girl, what can I say? I absolutely love sunflowers. We've tried to grow them in our yard every year, but we're not successful. We live um, in the country and, well, rabbits and deer and little mice type things kind of grab before we can even really get them a good start. But I'm also a big believer in if you plant it outside and another creature wants to eat it, they can. All right, so we're gonna do Rich Razzleberry over on this one. Now the alcohol markers do also dry super, super quick, which makes it ideal for things where you might need to run your hand over top of something that you just created. Because I am the queen of um, ink smears and basically anything that can go wrong will go wrong, but it's all fine. It's crafting. It's supposed to be fun. And there is no wrong in art. Okay, so we're gonna go over this guy with Highland Heather again. And we're just gonna blend it up. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but as we're going over, the color gets deeper with each application. Actually, this kind of looks more like a pansy than a poppy right now. Going over this a few more times because I do want it to have kind of more of a pansy feel than a poppy feel. Okay. So our flowers are done. I'm gonna grab our scissors and we're just gonna do a quick little fussy cut here. When you're fussy cutting, you wanna move your paper, not your scissors, because it gives you a little bit more control, usually. And you can see a little bit better when you're moving your paper than when you're moving the scissors. I don't get too terribly worried about being able to see the white of the cardstock. You can fix that either, whoops. You can fix that either by going over with your outline color and hiding the white um, or hiding it within the design. Now that rich razzleberry was a little bit harder to see through. So the Merlot and Saffron will in theory be easier to cut. So yeah, totally did not expect to go down this path today, but welcome to my craft room where anything can happen. And even I don't always know what's going on. Now, 
I do have um, a surprise for everybody who joins my email list. You can get a huge pack of tutorials for oodles of different cards. Um, and it's different every single month. So be sure to pop down to the link below and join my email list. I send it out um, about once a week and there's usually tips and tricks, ideas and all kinds of little hidden gems that you never know what you'll see. Sometimes they're longer, sometimes they're shorter, and sometimes there's even a surprise. All right, almost done with this poppy. And then we will get her done. All right, so because I am totally unprepared for doing anything, um, I wasn't planning on making a card today, but we're gonna grab this and we're gonna grab, what else are we gonna grab? Get our little scrap bin here. Um, let's do, I'm not sure if that's the right size, but we're just going to cut a card front and a matte layer. So this is Granny Apple Green. Oh, awesome. Exactly the size that I need, four and a quarter by five and a half. And this one is unfortunately sold out. Um, it's one of the celebration papers that was available. Um, we're almost at the tail end of celebration, so now it's basically um, when things sell out during celebration, that's it, they're gone. So hopefully if you love this paper, you got some. All right, so we're going to do there, four and a quarter, or sorry, four by five and a quarter. And then... Grab this, and I had some dimensionals. Oh, you know what? We'll grab those. These are um, some leftover gems from a paper pumpkin kit, so we'll use those. There's my flowers tucked away for safety, and now we're just gonna grab some dimensionals and we'll be good to go. Look at that, everything close at hand today. I know sort of what I'm doing. And my take your pick tool is even here. This is the one that the dog got to when she was littler, but it still works. So I don't believe in replacing my stuff unless it's non-functioning anymore. I did get a new one just because I can never find it. So now instead of hunting for just one, I tend to hunt for two. Okay, so we're going to do yellow. I'm going to hide the purple underneath, I think. Just because, well, maybe, I don't know. I'll hide the edge. So just flick your marker over and we'll be able to hide all of the little white bits that we're poking through. They're not so noticeable on the red or the white, or red or the yellow. Um, so we're gonna do our three little flowers down below. And we're gonna give it a little bit of an interesting, or a little bit of a different look. Um, we're only gonna pop up one side of it. So I put tape on the bottom and a dimensional on the top piece. So we're just gonna put that down so you can see that it's popped up a little bit and we're gonna do the same for the other colors as well. I was just gonna leave them, but I think I need to cover up our edges here. Just super quick. Um, alcohol ink is not washable with water. As I notice, I'm getting really close to my fingers here. Um, but you can wash it off with hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol. Um, 
if you get it on your clothes, it might work to take it off. I have not really been successful in that. But I'm also used to being a bit of a crafting tornado. So the only thing I don't like in my craft room is loose glitter. It kind of sets me on the path of a panic. And then we'll do our last one here. Grab our dimensional. Oops. Um, you know what? We're going to use our clear. So you can color the gems. Um, when you do, I like to do the flat side just because I don't want to wreck the tip. So I did some Melon Mambo and then we're going to do a couple of Rich Razzleberry. Three, four, three, six, nine. Okay, we're done. I prefer odd numbers on my cards. Um, and then we're going to do a sentiment. What sentiment are we going to do for this one? Um, oh, I'll make a... Best wishes. I haven't done one of those cards in a while. So this sentiment is from Art Gallery. I love the font in this one. So I'll grab this and then I'm going to grab our memento. With the um, photopolymer stamps, you can lay them straight or if you want to, you can kind of do a little bit of a curve with them. Actually, I like that. Just to give it a little bit of a different look. Best wishes. There we go. And then we're just going to sprinkle on our gems. I like to leave them just for a couple of seconds so that they can dry. Alcohol ink, as I said earlier, dries really, really quickly. So you really don't need to worry too much about it smudging or coming off. Put one down there. So there's our card that didn't be, it wasn't intended to be a card today. Um, so we've colored our gems with the Stampin' Blends. We've colored our flowers a few different ways. And you can see that the color on the Stampin' Up! one is a little bit more smooth than on our less expensive cardstock um, and it blended quite a bit better. You can actually see quite sharp lines um, whereas this one blended a little bit more. Now the more that you blend the smoother it gets. So that will be it for today's Stampin' Blends tutorial. As always if you have any questions at all please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can either reach me through the comments down below or pop on over to either my Facebook page, my VIP group, or my blog, um, and you can get a, a hold of me there as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with me. Happy crafting, and I'll see you again soon.